Hey folks, how are we doing? We're back on it. We're back on the. Uh, we're back in the hills. <laughs> we're up in Lake District. Uh, yeah, we're up. Um, we've actually come up over Red Screes and I'm camped at Scandale Tor and I've got a fantastic view down the valley here. I've had to chuck the tent up pretty sharpish because uh, oh, the weather came in. It was rotten, absolutely horrible. I was going to film film myself putting the tent up, but uh, no, we had to get it up and get sheltered because it were uh, it were hooking it down. Anyway, so I've got a couple of days free and um, it's what we're on today. 26th of September so the nights are drawing in the nights are there's actually more more darkness than there is light now it's gone past the uh, the equinox so I thought I'd make the most of it get up here and we're trying to get some pictures of ravens now I came up um, a few years ago now and we did me and my cousin we did the Furfield horseshoe and we were coming down, oh the weather was awful, it was wild, absolutely, unbelievably wild. You couldn't even stand up on the top. And um, anyway, we were coming down the other side and we stopped for, you know, having, having a brew and some bagging and what have you. And a raven come and landed um, right next to us. And we were chucking it, you know, bits of butty and what. And I've, I've always thought back, I thought, It'd be great if I could get up here and, um, you know, try and get some raven pictures because they're a fantastic bird. They're a big, majestic. I don't know, there's something about them. I remember seeing them as a, a kid down at the Tower of London and they're, well, they're intelligent as well and they can, you know, they mimic, they can they can speak and, oh, they're, they're a fantastic bird, really. I don't know, something mysterious about them. Anyway, I thought, we'll have a do. So we've come up, we've brought the camping gear, we're doing an overnighter. Um, I'm going to show you what I brought in the bag because when you're doing something like this you've got to be careful um, it's really really interchangeable the weather up here it's um, you know one minute it's sunny next minute it's absolutely blowing and early you can get uh, you can get in bother if you're not careful so you've got to bring the right stuff with you um, I set off in a t-shirt and we in half an hour I had everything on you know the weather had come in so yeah, you've got to have your wits about you. Uh, I've actually sent my missus a, a what three words location so she knows where I'm camping. Told her what time I'm, I'm going to be back. You know, if I'm not back two hours after that, you know, it's time to ring someone up. I might have, uh, you don't know, you've, you've no phone signal up here. So you could have come a cropper and bust your leg or something like that. So yeah, just uh, things to be aware of. So what we're going to do, I mean, it's getting... <laughs> There's a raven up there. I'm just, I'm just below a crag. In fact, I'll just spin you around. You can see, just look at that. Unbelievable. I don't even know if you can make them out, but there's three of them there. Four of them. Wow. Anyway, so. <laughs> there you go. There's plenty about, so whether we get any pictures or not is another thing, but we'll have a do. So, yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to have a look what's in the bag. I'll show you what I brought with me. We're going to get some food on because it's uh, time is now. It's quarter to five now, so it's getting on a bit. Um, we'll get our bed made up. Tent's well anchored down. I've put two pegs on it because it's windy and all. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to see if we can get some pictures of some ravens. I'm going to get another layer on because it's getting a bit cowed and uh, yeah, we'll see you in a bit.
Wind's picking up. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Let's get under here. Right, let's have a look what we've brought with us. So, first off, we're on the Shimoda, the Shimoda X70, <clears throat> which is the big bag. When I come up at hills, I need this bag for the capacity. All right, because it's got a big roll top on it. So it enables me to put the tent in, sleeping bag, etc, etc. Big pockets in the side. I can actually fit the tent in the side pocket. So Shimoda X70, excellent bag. Very good bag. Right. So sleep system. We've got Trekology. Um, Trekology UL140 mat. It's a thick mat. It's really comfortable. Um, it's not a lot heavier than me, me Thermarest and I get a better night's sleep on it. It's got an internal pump, um, fantastic mat. Sleeping bag wise, now I was going to bring me four season bag because it's going to get a bit perky tonight but it's too big, it's a, it's a big bag. Now I brought this, it's a two stroke three season one, a Van Gogh. Um, as a backup I brought a silk liner. Apparently a silk liner will add another season onto your bag, so all being well we should be warm enough. We're on that nice mat as well, so we're with plenty of uh, you know space between the, the ground and our body. So we'll have long johns on as well. So <laughs> um, little bag of spur claws in a dry bag. Always put them in a dry bag because if you get absolutely sopping wet they'll still be dry. Um, just the basics, like I said, long johns, thermal top, t-shirt, undies, a couple of pair of spare socks, the minimum, the minimum stuff. Okay, first aid kit, yep, essential when you're up in the mountains. Um, little wash bag, a few essentials in, toothpaste, toothbrush, etc. Um, right, let's have a look. Cooking wise, right, I brought my Primus. I've got a few stoves. I've not brought any uh, any gas with me today. So this is the Primus Omnifuel. It's absolutely brilliant. I bought it for uh, bike packing. And um, the beauty of it is, it'll run off pretty much anything. So that's the that's the fuel bottle. You put um, your, your pressurizer in, you pump it up and it vaporizes the fuel. So it'll run off petrol, diesel, white fuel, Primus fuel, anything basically um, it's a bit noisy but it don't matter does it you just change the jets in it depending on uh, on what fuel you're using so great little stove really good stove that so that's that um, cooking pots the bare minimum again just brought I've got that pot for doing my water in for my food and a little titanium cup for brewing featherweight absolutely light as anything so the beauty of that is the cup will go inside that um, that stainless steel pot utensil wise again folding titanium dead light long spoon for in the uh, for the dehydrated meals and a camp knife so that's the cooking side of it sorted um, Let's have a look what we're going to eat. So, again, thinking about weight saving, these are an absolute godsend. Dehydrated meals. Now, my uh, my eldest, my son Sam, he got married this year to Molly, and Molly is American. Now, so he goes over to America um, quite a bit, you know, visiting and that. And I said to him when he went last time, I said, see if you can get me some of them dehydrated meals, because apparently... The ones in the States, they're a little bit more generous. So we've yet to try them. So that's for that's breakfast. So it's a breakfast skillet. We're on uh, shredded potatoes, scrambled eggs with pork sausage, peppers and onions in the morning, which sounds delicious. Tonight we're on sweet potato, chicken and rice. And for afters, mango sticky rice. So we'll report how good they are, but uh, they sound good. A bit of chocolate for the old energy and some uh, some fruit gums. Um, that's food wise. That's the food sorted. You've seen I've got me. That's my water system. 
so I can I can filter any water I need to. Like I said, I'm going to boil that up anyway because it's going in the dehydrated food. Um, what else have we got? Oh, a bit of broom making stuff. Essentials, tissue paper and wipes. Um, yeah, freeze dried coffee, sugar, creamer, whatever. So that's the brew sorted. Um, right, photo gear. <clears throat> Just the one camera. Obviously, the OM1 with the 150 to 400, which is it's doing the job. It really is. I was, uh, you know, I was <laughs> a little bit sceptical, but it's doing that every time I go out with it it's doing the job I went out the other day I've um, it's a bit of a departure this because last week I was cycle touring around the Netherlands and I did uh, we did 350 miles and it, this, the Netherlands is just beautiful but there's so many waterways and I thought um, I thought I'd see a kingfisher or two but I never saw one when I got home the day after I went down to one of my uh, kingfishers uh, shoots and I got some fantastic pictures I'll put a couple of them up now but they were bang on and it, it is it's doing it's doing the business it really is I've still not got around to using the pro capture properly but that will come so that's the camera that we've got I've obviously got my vlogging gear as well so I've got the Canon M50 which you can see well which is being used to film on now I've got a little Osmo action that I use with a, a Joby tripod. Binoculars, absolutely essential. We always bring the binos. Battery bank, um, just for charging, charging my phone, charging batteries if I need to. I shouldn't need to because I've got extra batteries, but that's a just in case. Um, what else have we got? The usual, um, I've trimmed stuff down again, so memory cards, vlogging gear, uh, microphones, what else have we got? We've got, back in here, yeah, there are my batteries and another bag with just cleaning stuff in, a blower brush, lens cloths, the essentials, but again, minimum stuff. Um, now the good thing is, with this bag, it has these it has an insert in it so that insert comes out of the Shimoda you can get different sized inserts now these are extremely deep so what I can do once that's in there <coughs> once the camera's in there's loads of room for other stuff so I can fit I can fit my buff in um, you know I have a, a little bean bag there new bean bag that's the Raven bean bag we'll see that tomorrow in action well, that's going to be on the Etsy store so just in time for Christmas but things like that they'll fit in um, I can really pack it in so the tighter the better so clothing wise like I said I brought a few spare clothes camo stuff I've just brought me uh, my head veil one scrim net my pair of lucky gloves and a pair of pair of mitts, uh, Valoret mitts. Like I said before, I set off. It was it was lovely when I set off for in a t-shirt, and then before before you know half an hour, I had everything on, and it was cold, and I had them on as well because my hands were getting cold. So that is about it, really. Really important thing as well. If you do come up into the hills, just be careful because it's uh, it's quite a hostile environment, really. Some people. They kind of, I don't know, they bat it off and, and look at the weather, they think it's going to be fine and they don't prepare for every eventuality. Um, bring a map with you. Bring a map and a compass because the weather can come down and you can get, you know, you can get lost. You don't, you don't think it can get as bad as it does, but um, yeah. You can get, you can become unstuck. Don't rely on uh, mobile phones and ele <coughs> electronic devices, even GPSs. You know the batteries can go flat on them. So, an idea to have a, a map and compass and learn how to use them. It's no good having a map and compass if you don't know how to use them. All right. So, yeah, that's about it. That's the gear that I bring when I'm on a, a trip like this up in the hills. Time for tea. Thank you. 
Well, we've eaten and uh, I must say the dessert was a bit better than the main course. Yeah, it, uh, it served a purpose. Let's put it that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the lightweight and that's all that matters on a trip like this. So we're, we're kind of sorted out for the night. It's, uh, what time are we on? Quarter to eight and it's dark outside already. So gloves are hanging up. Everything's sorted, everything's, uh, I've been round, checked all the guy ropes, because it's, uh, like I said, it's a bit breezy. So we've uh, tightened the guys up, and uh, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna get my head down now. Might listen to a bit of a podcast, and we're gonna get up, well, we're just gonna get up when we get up, but I uh, have no doubt I'll wake up at first light, and I think the, the order of the day is, weather permitting, this crag up here, as I were making, tea before there were five five ravens came over all cartwheeling and oh it was fantastic but i got a little bit of video footage but hopefully they'll be knocking about up there whether they're more active in the morning they should be so we'll have a look at that crag come back have some breakfast um then we'll head back over to raven crag and that's where the cars park below there down at um near the pub so yeah that's the that's the order of the day tomorrow and we'll see if we can get some pictures but if we don't we've had a good crack haven't we yeah all right we'll see you morning morning folks that was a wild night <clears throat> that was <laughs> i thought we were going to take off at one point it's still a bit uh it's gusting I thought the tent stood up, well I think it did, we're still here anyway, so it's something to look out, <laughs> decent forecast today, there we go, that's the view. Bad, is it? Not a bad view, you pay good money for that one. Anyway, I'm gonna get a brew on. See, you've got cold and all. So we're glad I put this silk liner in. Thing is, um, I wrapped my fleece around my feet as well because my feet were cold. But it did the job. Yeah, right, let's get a brew on. Definitely weather for mitts. <laughs> anyway, we've got the first brew on. That's a good do. Sun shining. That rain that we had yesterday is uh, not showing any signs of appearing, which is good. So yeah, fantastic view. Absolutely stunning. So the plan, plan for today. Well, I think it's going to be. A bit of a tough gig to be honest because I mean they just they could be anywhere we're not baiting them and uh, we're not photographing them at the nest so we're gonna head back over Red Screes and I was watching yesterday when I was making my way over I was watching them and there were a couple of places where they tended to favour they were landing on the, on the side of the crag so I think what we're gonna do we'll get some get some breakfast down the neck, warm up a bit and then we'll head over there and we're just going to sit, sit for a few hours, we've got all day, weather's nice and it'll be a nice aspect over there because the sun's coming over that way so we should get some nice light and we'll see if we can get some uh, some pictures of, of the, <laughs> the ravens I know I did actually yesterday get a couple of nice flight shots as they were flying across um, 
it were nice because they were against the dark background you know you've got high street i think it is on the other side so they weren't against the sky so we weren't having the, the trouble with them being silhouetted so we'll go over there and uh, see what we can do eh? but it's just it's just nice to be out in it lovely all oh, that sun's warming me up as well you can't beat it Well, there we go. That's camp. Camp broke down, as you can see. Leave only footprints. Take only photographs. That's the saying. Yeah, take all your stuff with you. Leave it as you found it. Leave no trace. Right. What we're going to do now? I mentioned that crag yesterday. Now, I've seen a few ravens knocking about there this morning. We're going to go up there. We'll have a couple of hours. Sit up there. See what comes by. Might get some flight shots, and then what we're going to do, we're going to head back up, up that thing there. That's <laughs> that's the back of Red Screes, and we've got Raven Crag at the back of there. And we we saw some there yesterday, so we'll have a trudge round. We'll get big, big Bertha back on the back, and uh, yeah, see what we can see. This looks like a, a decent spot. What a view. Oh, I'll have to get that off my back. Right, let's get this down. We don't get a wet backside. Better. Wow. Got two circling right above me. Right above me. I mean, this is real. I'm going to put my hat on. Real hit and miss photography, to be honest, because I have no idea where they're going to land. I think the best we can hope for in this particular area is some flight shots. If we get them coming, coming past. All well and good, hopefully against the uh, against the crags. I'll show you. Let's have a look. So oh. here we are. Let's alter that a bit. That's better. Let's alter the uh, there we go. So we've just come come from down down there down the back of this uh, this crag here and that's the aspect that we've got 
absolutely stunning. <clears throat> so hopefully, you know, we might get some ravens doing some low passes along there and we'll uh, we'll try and do a bit of flight, just get some flight shots, <laughs> whether we do or not is another thing, but I hope you can hear me, it's uh, it's proper windy, wood's going up, but what a view, what an absolute peach of a view, yeah if we get anything it's a bonus, but we'll stick it out, we'll have a, we'll have an hour or two here and then we'll, uh, we'll make a move, all right. We'll find a cracking little spot here. We're just heading over to the, uh, well, we're going to head over to Red Screes and then have a look over onto Raven Crag. But I've just dropped into this little valley and I saw three or four of them just flitting about, working their way up and down this beck. So I've just got myself perched against this lovely rock and uh, I'm just going to have an hour here. Fantastic spot, it's a little bit bright, the sun's, there's a lot of cloud today so the cloud keeps going over and uh, giving me some decent light, it's a bit too harsh at the moment because it's kind of in my face but it's alright, I keep seeing the odd one, I've had a couple of flight shots which has been good, just shooting at the moment, well ISO is 500 and it's giving me one and a half thousandth of a second, which is, it's too fast really for, um, you know, for this kind of stuff, because they're a pretty slow flying bird, to be honest, unless they go into that dive. So we might just, yeah, 12, one twelve fiftieth and ISO 800, shooting wide open, trying, uh, Try and get as much background blur as we can, see if we can isolate them. But the tricky birds, they really are, they're very wary. I say that, uh, that occasion where one of them landed right next to us, they must have been really struggling for food. So they obviously caught on to the fact that walkers will have some food and they might just get the odd scrap. But at the moment, this time of year, there's obviously plenty of food about. So they're not having to scavenge off hill walkers. Oh, there's one. Nice. Nope. 
Not happening. Not happening. It's too heavy. Shows a nice little idea all here up on the crag. Just cracked a brew up. We're trying. We're trying the breakfast skillet. <laughs> we had beef and vegetable for breakfast. This is more of a dinner this one. So we'll see what this one's like. But cold. Yeah, it's cold up here. Just seen a um, sparrow up just flew past before about 10 minutes ago just perched on a rock I managed to get a, a little reference photo of it nothing special but it was just nice to see it surprised to see it this high up to be honest no didn't uh, thought they'd be hanging more around the woodlands really but obviously it's hoping to pick up a you know one of the small birds there's not many up here you can see the odd meadow pipit yeah yeah let's get this brew on Get wham. Right, we've decided staying put is definitely the best policy for photographing these ravens because they range for. I don't know, they seem to range for miles and miles. I've watched them and they go right into the other valley, out of sight, and you haven't got a chance to be honest, you know, if you're chasing them around. So I'm just below Red Screes now. I've got a fantastic view. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. So we spotted them yesterday down on this this crag face here so I'm just gonna have a couple of hours here watch the world go by you never know they might land you never know what a place so really it's been a lesson in um, well it's not been a failure I've got a few pictures and I'll put them up uh, not so much video but we might have a bit more after this uh, this little couple of hours we're going to do, but it's just a case of getting out there, isn't it? It's good research. You know, I know now that <laughs> don't go chasing ravens around because they're wary, they're proper cute, they're difficult. As soon as they see you, you know, making a move, they're away. So I think it's just a case of getting bedded down. Find a favourite spot, you know, and if you can get them on a a sheep carcass or a deer carcass in the winter that's going to be a good uh, definitely a good ploy you know get a hide set up but that's for another day so thanks for joining me hope you've enjoyed it it's been a trudge but we've enjoyed it it's good got a few miles in the legs yeah good camp last night wild and windy had some good food and uh, yeah I've enjoyed it not the uh, we've not got the best pictures in the world but we've seen them we've got a few snaps more mostly reference pictures to be honest but uh, no it's been all right so thanks again thanks for joining us don't forget to like hit the subscribe button it helps the channel out massively and we'll see you on the next one Thank you.